This is KGW News at Sunrise. When I realized what was happening when I turned around and saw the car behind me and the spectator banging on the car yelling at the guy, I jumped onto the shoulder of the road and the car just took off. That woman is describing the moment her Shamrock Run experience this past weekend nearly came to an end at the hands of a suspected drunk driver. We're going to hear more from her in just a few minutes as the driver is set to make their first appearance in court later this morning. And local students are finding creative solutions to some of their community's biggest issues. It's all through a program at Clackamas High School, but the focus right now is supporting refugees. Also, something big happening today. Something's leaving and something's arriving. Yes. So spring is leaving, or pardon me, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Winter is leaving. That, that was an accurate slip though. Spring is arriving. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess you're right, Chris. Yeah. Uh, the countdown to spring right oh, there on your screen. Yeah, we have a big countdown. What's this it say? Fancy. 15, 15 hours, hours, four minutes, 56 seconds, 55. Like I'm gonna count it all the way down to the final second here. It's only gonna take me 15 hours. We hate to let you down to the uh, arrival of spring. Yeah, so yeah. you're right in that yeah. spring technically arrives today, but spring-like weather will be leaving us very shortly. Yeah. I will say though, um, we could still hit 60 tomorrow. We could still hit 60 on Thursday, and if it weren't for what we are just getting out of, that wouldn't seem I mean, so 60's bad. This is pretty nice, yeah, really. Right. Yeah. Here's a look at uh, we have clear skies over downtown. The Rose City camera this morning. 49 is the current temperature. Uh, if you are just joining us, good morning. 77 yesterday at PDX smashed the daily record, which was 71. Also, at 77, the warmest of the run of 70 degree temperatures. But we're not done yet. 61 today. I've up today's forecast high to 73. It will not be as warm as yesterday, but I feel confident it will at least hit 70. And today's record is 73. So what a way to end winter. Here's Chris. That is unbelievable. All right, let's get you out the door. A quick look at the drive out of Clark County. It's Rolling right along. This is from SR 500. Just a couple of cars making that south on I-5 drive over to the east side. Banfield Interstate 84. Is there anyone there? One, two, three cars. You, you get the idea. Lots of elbow room out there on the freeways this morning. No crashes, no unexpected freeway delays just yet. China. Chris, thank you for that. The Washington County Sheriff's Office is looking for more victims of a man. 55 year old Jimmy Lynn Lou police say Lou posted an ad on Craigslist looking for a housekeeper. A woman responded to the ad when she arrived at his home in Aloha. Lou assaulted her by touching her feet. Right. So we have uh, more on the story coming up a little bit later, but right now we want to get to our next story this morning. St. Patrick's Day weekend saw several violent crimes in and around downtown Portland, starting with a deadly stabbing on the steel bridge last Friday. And then on Sunday, one man was shot and killed and another stab. Thomas Schultz has the latest. And I just was like shocked. Joseph Scott is a homeless Portland resident who spends his days here outside the Central Library. I did hear somebody say that they thought it was like fireworks going off. Just feet away from where Portland police say a man died after a shooting Sunday night. It's overwhelming. It's kind of scary that, uh, you know, um, it would happen so close to where I commute every day. Police haven't yet released the name of the man who died, but if his death is ruled a homicide, it would be the 18th in Portland this year. Still, despite the shooting, Scott says he feels comfortable in the Rose City. You know, all around, I think Portland is a pretty safe place, you know. At least most of it. Now, if you go down to Old Town at night, that might be a little different, you know. <laughs> down to Old Town, where a man was stabbed early Sunday morning. Police say the stabbing happened after a scuffle between two groups. It's scary. It's always scary to hear of things like that. Darlene Urban Garrett works in Old Town, and she says crime is becoming more common. I don't know what to say. It's like not an uncommon thing to see ambulances and fire trucks and police every day. The reason? I think drugs are the... Uh, are the underlying cause of so much that's going on here in the city. Now, police have not said whether drugs played a factor in either incident, though to Urban Garrett, it's why she's no longer surprised by violence so close to work. It makes me sad, but it's not shocking. That was Thomas Schultz reporting. And so far, a person has been arrested in the Old Town stabbing, but not in connection with the shooting. As for Friday's deadly stabbing on the Steel Bridge, a suspect was arrested Saturday. However, yesterday, we learned that those charges were dropped and the court ordered the suspect to be released. We're still working to find out why.
We also have an update this morning on the man who stabbed two teenagers in a racially motivated attack on a Mac train last year. That man will spend the next 18 years in prison. As part of a plea deal, Adrian Cummins pled guilty to four charges, including one count of attempted murder. The stabbing happened last September on a Max train in Southeast Portland. Two 17 year old boys, both of them black, were riding on that train when Cummins yelled the N word at them and then attacked them. According to prosecutors, one of the teens was stabbed in the arm. The other was stabbed in the chest. Both boys have since recovered. This morning, we're hearing from a runner nearly hit by a suspected drunk driver during Sunday's Shamrock Run. Devin Haskins is live outside Multnomah County Courthouse. And Devin, that driver will be in court later today. Yeah, that driver, 62 year old Brian Roan, will make his first court appearance here at Multnomah County Court a little later this morning in just a couple of hours. He was arrested on Sunday after he drove past a barricade. Police say he was drunk and onto the course that was closed down for the 15K portion of the run. This happened just before 10 a.m. on Sunday near Southwest Barber in Hamilton. Police say Brian Roan went through that barricade nearly hitting a runner. They caught up to him at the Burlingame Fred Meyer and arrested him. Police say he was drunk with a 0 0.10 blood alcohol level. Now we talked with one of those runners that was nearly hit on Sunday. Faith Londo flew in from Florida to run in the Shamrock Run. So she describes realizing just how close she'd come to getting hit. Really I had my headphones in. I was listening to my music. I was kind of in my groove. And all of a sudden I heard like a car's engine revving nearby, which I thought was kind of weird because there wasn't supposed to be anyone on the course, but also there were neighborhoods nearby. So I just wasn't paying much attention until I heard a commotion behind me. And one of the spectators was actually banging on the door of the car that was maybe six inches away from me. Brian Roan faces uh, Brian Roan faces multiple charges, including DUI, reckless driving and reckless endangerment. Back to you. All right, Devin Haskins reporting live for us this morning in downtown Portland. Also this morning, we're following up on a story we brought you last week here on Sunrise. It was part of Devin's Emmy winning series that we call What's in a Name. Now the one focused on Millen's Park and how it got its name and the man whose legacy lives on through it, Dick Fagan. In that story, we told you that Millen's Park became a park on St. Patrick's Day 70 years ago. Fagan's family celebrates the Irish holiday at Mill Ends every year, and this year was no different. They sent us these photos from their celebration on Sunday. You can see family members, young and old, gathering to remember their loved ones. A fantastic story from Devin Haskins, literally bringing me to tears. What? To watch it and to catch up with the rest of the series, just text the word name to 503-226-5088, and we'll text you back two links to watch on KGW.com and on the KGW YouTube channel. Now, you were out. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I was at Kells. You were at Kells. So I missed the whole story. You missed the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish we could go back to that photo of the family because I'm not sure if they were all gathered in the park at the same time, and I think they would be, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, I drove, pa I drove past after Devin shared the story Friday, which I was not here to hear. Mm -hmm. I was at Kells. Driving back from Kells, though, we drove past yeah. Mill Ends Park. And uh, I thought to myself, how did that whole family squeeze inside that They're little park? They're gathered around the park, not in the park. Right. You can only get one person Rod in the park Hill. at one time, Well, I really. suppose that's true. Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> we have to be careful. Let with it happen. <laughs> Let them have the moment. So we're um, not in spring yet. No. We're kind of around spring. Ooh, great segue that, yes, out of you. That was good. Uh, our run. Today's <laughs> the seventh day of dry weather, Mr. Carney. We haven't yes. done that since the final week of November. Hmm. Our temperature is starting back last Thursday, 66, 71, 76, 76, 77 yesterday. Hmm. Smashed the record for yesterday's date, which was 71. And today, 73. <laughs> Uh, we could tie the record today. A lot going Do on that, that piece of When the glasses and yeah, paper right is out, okay. it is business. It's, it's business. Uh, now, with all of that said, today, the finale. I hope you can enjoy it. Sunny skies, temperatures at least 70 or better. Tomorrow, clouds will be back. And then every single day, literally as far as the eye can see, has a rain chance in it once again. But tomorrow, not much rain around. Just a few showers and, and perhaps only in the p.m. hours. Thursday again. Just a few showers, lots of dry time. Both days could hit 60. That's still nice weather as spring begins. And then Friday, likely afternoon rain. And this is when all of a sudden, OK, now it's raining. Now the yard's getting a good soak into the weekend. Rain totals this weekend could be about three quarters of an inch here in Portland over the two day period. And the weekend snow level down to 3000 feet. So that would 
more than a foot of snow will come to the Mount Hood resorts, which is great news for the spring break season as this weekend kicks off the two weeks of, you know, back to back spring breaks in our region. All right, here's the upper level high. It was here and it was bigger and stronger. Now it's here and it's weakening, but you see the clouds are still back here in terms of weather system. So this is the finale of this ridge holding tight and bringing all the warm weather. Second morning in a row, we do have marine cloudiness. Uh, at, actually going back to Sunday, third morning in a row, I believe. Um, yesterday, the clouds broke. Today, they may not. So you folks in Newport, you could be cloudy all day. 46 is your current number. If you're cloudy all day, you won't get much above 50. We have clear skies inland. Salem, good morning, 44. The Dow's good morning, 42. Out in Burns, good morning. You are freezing along with Baker City. Here's our Futurecast movie. Shows you the morning cloud cover at the beach. Shows it kind of breaking, if this were exactly right, up around the uh, parts of the Clatsop County, maybe in the Tillamook, but it holds the clouds down in Lincoln County. And then here we are tomorrow. You wake up, it's spring, and it's overcast. Here come a few showers developing, mainly in the afternoon hours into the evening. Again, these would be light total rain amounts. And then into Thursday, which you're looking at right now, Again, clouds, showers, but not much, and really not much wind. Temperature's still up to around 60, so as I mentioned, that's still pretty nice. May or may not see some breaks in the cloud cover at the beach today. This shows low to mid-50s, light winds overall. In the valley, upper 60s to uh, a lot of us will hit 70 again. This shows Salem stopping at 69, but you may hit 70. Shows Battleground up to 72. I have Portland at 73. And then still 60 tomorrow, 62 Thursday. In terms of it being, okay, now it's raining more than it's not. That's Friday afternoon through the weekend into the first part of next week. One more lonely sunny day left. Hold on to it, Rod. Hold on to that day. Hold on to the 70s. I love you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Hill.